You're looking down, Thomas. What's the matter? <sighs> it's my coaches, Annie and Clarabelle. Usually they're these peppery, vibrant chatterboxes, and lately they've just seemed kind of depressed. And I can't figure out what's wrong. They won't tell me. Well, don't let it eat you, Thomas. I'm sure it's nothing you've done. Just then, the signal turned to clear. Donald whistled goodbye to Thomas, then set off with his goods train. The next engine Thomas met was Toby. He was refilling at the water tower. Hello, Thomas, said Toby. What's got you so, um, blue? Thomas explained about Annie and Clarabelle. Hmm, said Toby thoughtfully. I know. I'll ask Henrietta if she knows what's wrong. Those coaches tell each other everything, you know. Oh, thank you, Toby, said Thomas. It'll be so nice if I can figure out what's wrong and try to help Annie and Clarabelle be happier. And with that, Thomas puffed away feeling much better. Later, Thomas was at Brendam Docks, waiting for Cranky to unload some packages. What are you doing here? asked Danny. I thought you were supposed to stay on your branch line from now on. I got bored, said Thomas. Don't get me wrong, I love my branch line, but sometimes I could just use a change in view, you know? Just as Cranky was unloading the last package, Toby clanked into the docks. I've just spoken to Henrietta, Thomas said Toby. She says that Annie and Clarabelle are jealous of you because you got to go off Sodor. She says they need a change in view and they're bored with your branch line. Thomas frowned. Thank you, Toby, he said. Well, at least now I know what the problem is, but I have no idea how to fix it. Why don't you take your coaches to get a new coat of paint at Croven's Gate, suggested Danny. They'll like that. Mine always do. Thomas thought it was a splendid idea. Thomas's driver phoned Sir Topham Hatt, who agreed to make the necessary arrangements. The next day, Thomas brought Annie and Clarabelle to Croven's Gate. Although he knew he wasn't going directly to the root of the problem that was depressing Annie and Clarabelle, Thomas thought that Danny's advice was good, and it was worth a try. But as he approached the station, he noticed a commotion, and an engine from the other railway. What's the matter? asked Thomas. I haven't enough coaches for the return journey, said the other engine. There's too many passengers, and they're growing impatient. I don't know what I'm to do. Suddenly, an idea struck Thomas. Are you journeying back to the mainland? Yes, of course, said the other engine. Why? You can take my coaches, said Thomas. Just remember to bring them back later. I will certainly do that, as long as I can stop these passengers from grumbling. It's driving my ears crazy. Although Thomas couldn't see them, Annie and Clarabelle's faces had lightened up quite a bit at the news that they were going off of Sodor. A few minutes later, Thomas had shunted Annie and Clarabelle behind the train. The two coaches were just enough to accommodate the remaining passengers. When all of the passengers had boarded and the guard had blown his whistle and waved his green flag, the engine from the other railway sent off with his train. Thank you, he called. No problem, called Thomas. And then Annie and Clarabelle chorus. Thank, Thank you, you Thomas. Thomas smiled, knowing that he had made his coaches happy again. That evening, Thomas and some of the other engines were resting in the yard when Arthur puffed up with Annie and Clarabelle. I was shunting up at Croven's gate, said Arthur, when some engine from the other railway came over and, well, kind of told me to give you Annie and Clarabelle. Not sure why he had them, but here you go. And with that, Arthur was off. Thomas smiled. Well, he said, did you enjoy your journey to the mainland? Oh, yes, said Clarabelle. It was lovely to see the sights of mainland Europe. And that engine was such a gentleman, too, said Annie. Thank you very much, Thomas, said Clarabelle. Well, said Thomas, I'm glad you enjoyed yourselves. Although I'm not the only one you have to thank. Thomas told them everything that had happened in the past two days, and Annie and Clarabelle thanked Toby and Henrietta, and resolved to do the same for Danny when they next saw him. The trip was wonderful, as we were saying, said Annie, but still, I think we both agree. There's no place like Sodor, chorused the coaches.